And yes, it's another quick follow-up video from the uh, all the auction stuff. Thought I'd take a look inside this uh, ICP industrial computer because these things uh, bring back lots of memories. I've designed lots of production test systems, and uh, I even believe I've spec'd in at one stage uh, almost this exact machine. Uh, and it, it, I believe the exact motherboard, if uh, mama, if uh, memory serves me correctly. So. Uh, these are, you know, uh, rather interesting uh, things if you haven't uh, seen them before. So we'll take a look inside one of these industrial computers. And this one in particular is the uh, IEI uh, Technology Corp Rack 3000GB-R21-A130A. And they've got more options than you can poke a stick at. And there's many um, supplies of these industrial computers, or there were, uh, back in the day, there still are, and uh, I've these things are incredibly reliable, but basically what sets them apart, they're a 19-inch uh, standard rack, of course, this one looks like, like a 5 rack unit uh, high one, and uh, they're full depth, because take a look at the uh, full length card in there, and it's still got room for a uh, second hard drive here, um, plus the fans and filters we'll take a look at, this one comes with a uh, CD drive, I don't know if a hard drive installed, it's got a docking uh, bay down there, I don't have the key so I uh, haven't been able to pull that out yet, but basically what defines these things are the, the sheer number of slots, I mean this one has 14 uh, slots on it, both a combination of um, old school uh, ISA of course, plus uh, PCI because this is the uh, technology of the day, it's fairly old and uh, You'll notice that, and there's a uh, cross uh, brace support in here, and usually like the hard drives come with uh, rubber uh, shock mounts and stuff like that. I mean, that might be, you know, commonplace these days on, you know, modern silent PCs and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, you know, having hard drive shock and vibration mounts was, you know, uh, quite, you know, quite the innovation in these uh, industrial uh industrial computers, you never got them in the old, um, you know, they just weren't really an option in uh, old PCs, nobody cared, you know, the slap together PCs, but these industrial machines, incredibly, incredibly reliable, I've had some of these working for greater than 10 years continuous, and that's on the same power supply, this is an IEI uh, branded power supply, I'm not actually sure if they uh, do it themselves or they get somebody else to make it, but they're incredibly reliable and these things work out in the factory in the dust and the crap and the temperature extremes up and down, you know, from you know zero in winter overnight to up to, you know, 40 degree heat in the 45 degree heat in the middle of summer, all that sort of stuff and all sorts of, you know, um, crap in the air and chemicals spilled over them and all sorts of stuff and they are ultra reliable. This one has uh, two fans on the front, we've got a uh, filter down here which uh, they do get clogged up uh, a lot, you do have to uh, re replace them and generally um, you don't typically get um, anything on the front because they're designed to just you know shut up like that and uh, you know and not do anything, I mean this one's got a couple of uh, power and hard drive status LEDs, some of them uh, don't even have that so you know this one's usually you just get a big, oh that's a momentary, it's a momentary switch Check it out, that's not actually a proper clunking switch, so they've put a real, well it's a real clunking switch, but it's uh, it's not actually uh, switching the main, so that's that's unusual, I don't uh, remember having one with uh, that before, and basically what we've got here is the main motherboard down here, check out all the uh, PCI slots, no this is not, PC, not the days of PCI Express folks, this is uh, PCI, tons of PCI slots, why do you need 14 slots? Well, these industrial machines typically uh, control industrial machinery, and like, you know, I've almost fully kitted out these, you'll have, you know, multi-channel data acquisition cards, you know, national instruments cards are pretty much, uh, you know, standard fare in these uh, kind of things you'll find, shame I didn't get any national instruments cards in this one, this one looks like just a serial machine, all it's got is fitted out with uh, a couple of extra uh, serial port uh, cards in here, a comms card which I'll take out and, and we'll take the motherboard out and we'll have a closer look at that, we've got a um, a, uh, a, a bar across the top to hold the uh, cards in, they usually hold those in with uh, rubber mounts and stuff like that, um, really quite well designed and of course the uh, chipset down in there is a PCI uh, expansion chipset because the uh, standard chipset 
on the motherboard down in there obviously can't drive you know like a 14 PCI slots and by the way yes there is a couple of ISA slots over there and that's what these motherboards are designed to do I mean you won't find these this configuration in a regular PC like there's an ISA slot at the you know, towards the rear and then there's the PCI slot here and that's what the motherboard uh, plugs into uh, the PCI comes out here straight into the uh, expansion chipset which then uh, drives the 14 uh, PCI expansion slot so um, that's a fairly uh, standardized design in these industrial machines which you won't get in the more consumer ones so uh, I'll press stop I'll rip a few of the boards out and uh, we'll have a look at the main board and the main board we've got in this thing is the Rocky 4786EV-RS-40 version 4. And that version 4 is important, folks, because this board, well, this series board, this Rocky series board, uh, well, I remember these Rocky series boards, I've spec'd them in a few times myself, but there's many, many variants. Um, but this particular model uh, board was first, um, first uh, released in 2006. And uh, since then, they've actually, um, they, this one was uh, version 4. Point, that was version 1, and this is version 4, last updated in 2010 to include the um, Intel 865G Northbridge chip in here. They just keep updating these boards, keeping them compatible so that you can, uh, you know, move your industrial stuff, keep the same chassis, uh, replace ones in the field, stuff like that. That's the advantage with buying these industrial computers. I mean, this thing, just this one model of board, went through uh, many changes, had a four-year uh, time frame, and they'd all be fully uh, compatible. That's the advantage of this. I mean, you know, look, you know, the six, nine-month uh, churn time in the regular PC industry, I mean, four years for this particular model is nothing. You know, in even, even now, you'll still be able to uh, buy one. They'll still manufacture it, or if they don't sell the exact one, they'll sell an upgraded version that's fully compatible, and everything else to uh, keep your legacy systems up and running because as I said you know it wasn't uncommon um, for uh, in industrial places I've worked at to have the same machine working for 10 years and then even if it fails you've still got to replace it with the same board you don't want to replace the whole PC and the operating system you know we were still running Windows 3.11 for you know um, right up until just you know four years ago or something like that um, absolutely crazy so yeah these are uh, industrial machines this one um it's probably got like a celeron uh processor in it i don't know haven't uh, powered it up i'm not going to take the uh heat sink off there it'll have all the uh gunk on the back of it but yeah these things use prime spec uh parts i've never seen one of them fail due to a bad cap uh for example you know i'm sure you know they probably do in fact i'm sure they do uh eventually but you know, even working in, uh, you know, high temperature industrial uh, factories at, uh, you know, 40 degree uh, ambient and stuff like that, they don't miss a beat. They are absolutely fantastic uh, design boards. And got a couple of dim uh, slots up here, uh, regular dim slots. Some people may not have even seen those before. <gasps> oh dear, <laughs> compact flash <laughs> um, slot, because um, often uh, we wouldn't even have a hard drive. Sometimes you could... Um, boot these things from the uh, compact flash there were I remember I think there were particular drivers where you could actually uh, do that you could boot them from the uh, compact flash slots and uh, yeah it's got ethernet built in oh look at this that's advanced couple of um, SATAs down there oh so modern uh, backup battery of course and uh, it's got a uh, chipset to drive all the peripherals as you can see these are all serial cables coming out here so it's got you know serial parallel they all have parallel ports all those legacy uh, ports on them even modern ones are still made and of course um, uh, regular IDE um, cables because this one has uh, the hard drive and floppy of both IDE uh, interface so uh, really fascinating board so this is a fairly modern one I think it's about 2000 and 10, in fact, I might try and get a uh, date code on that. We've got a uh, heat sink um, and uh, bracket uh, bar on the back there. BIOS version 2.4. Um, oh, let me try and get a date code. Yeah, some of the chips down there have uh, date codes of uh, practically the end of 2009. So uh, basically, this is a 2010 uh, vintage board. And uh, this chipset, uh, the PCI chipset, 
down here, uh, expansion chipset, that's uh, late 2010. So, uh, yeah, this thing is, uh, like, you know, only a couple of years old. And, well, it certainly looks in that good a condition. There's certainly uh, not much in terms of uh, dust or anything else in here. It's in very good nick. And then we have this 8-port uh, serial card with the RJ11s on it. There you go. And that's from a company called the Cyclades Corporation. It's an 8YS uh, board. There you go. A basis chipset. Never heard of it. But there you go. 8-port um, serial card. Neat. So they're obviously doing lots of... Uh, serial cobs with this thing. It was its primary purpose pretty, pretty much. I didn't seem to do anything else except uh, control, uh, hook up to a modem and control a whole bunch of serial devices. And there's one thing you won't ever see on a PC motherboard. Nice big internal screw terminals. Look at that. Plus minus uh, 12 volts and 5 volts for any custom internal stuff you wanted to build into these things. And build, we certainly did. And this puppy has once again come from the National Measurement Institute B Block at uh, Linfield here in Sydney. There you go. <laughs> Last tested 2011. All right, let's power it on. See what we get. Here we go. Wait. What? Do I have to hold that on? No. No. Whoa! Fail. No, there's no other power switch on the back. No. Damn it. What's going on? Let's have a look. There. Yeah, that's all plugged in to the board down there. In the power supply. Let's follow the switch. Where's the wire? It looks like it's this one here. Which comes up here. And goes across. It's that. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Hey, there we go. So the switch doesn't go over the power supply. It goes to the motherboard. And then that PS on is labelled this wire. So this one comes out. And, oh. <laughs> Doll. <laughs> I must have accidentally pulled that out when I uh, was moving the card out. There we go. I think there's a... Yeah, it's PS on, is it? There it is. PS on, standby, bingo. So that controls the uh, standby pin on the power supply. So if we plug that in, it'll probably power up, or at least do something. Oh, yes, look. Got some LEDs on the motherboard now. And, uh, oh, we did. Oh, hello. And um, the other thing is, these things do uh, make a bit of a racket. The fans do have a... Uh, a lot of capacity. Oh, 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 I missed it. Missed it. It's booting. Linux. Yep, there you go. It's got Linux. Enterprise Linux. <laughs> Grub. Whatever Grub is, I'm sure all the uh, penguins are uh, going insane now. Because this sucker has Linux on it. And uh, I think somebody mentioned that. On the uh, comments, somebody mentioned that because, like, the um, serial outs were labelled um, as per a Linux uh, standard. So, they called it. It is Linux and it's booting. And it's a Red Hat um, variant. So, uh, yeah, it was labelled uh, TTYS um, for all the uh, serial... Uh, Focus, TTYS for all the uh, serial ports, and that is apparently the Linux uh, stuff. Oh, check in root file system. Oh, 655 days without being checked. Checked forced. I've got no keyboard plugged into this thing, so I guess it's just going to uh, keep going. I have to turn it off and uh, come back when it's done. And here we go. I think it's uh, getting ready to do the business and uh, they certainly haven't erased the uh, hard drive because they're measurement.gov.au it's all still there so uh, they, <laughs> nobody bothered they just uh, put this thing to auction without uh, erasing the hard drive and having a bit of um, lunch I'm a bit hungry gotta have a banana <clears throat> welcome to kudzu ah 
Okay, does that mean that's like a fresh installation? I've got a mouse plugged in, I don't have a keyboard plugged in. So, normal boot up, we'll continue. Hmm. Hmm. Nice banana, folks. Starting UPS model drivers. Oh, yeah, this was uh, all tied into the UPS. It's trying to load the uh, UPS drivers there, and uh, it's uh, not going to, uh, well, it's going to load the drivers, but uh, there's no UPS attached, so maybe it could uh, take a while to time out, perhaps. Oh, yeah, there we go, fail. Jeez, taking a while to boot, let me tell you. Windows 3.11 used to boot like in a couple of seconds it, on, on these industrial computers. It was absolutely brilliant. And the good thing about Windows 3.11 that we were running on uh, some machines I've worked with is that in the middle of on these mobile test, uh, mobile test uh, trolleys that went around the factory, the operators could just unplug them and you wouldn't corrupt your file system at all. Windows 3.11 was great. It just, hey, there we go. Welcome to amberley.inmeasurement.gov.au. Username, please enter your username. Oh. I don't know. I don't have a username because I don't have a keyboard attached. Doll. Oh. I'll actually repower this thing and have a look at that processor again because we missed it. Um, the keyboard and mouse didn't work, by the way, so it looks like I have to reboot anyway. So let's give it a go and let's have a look. There we go. We've got an Intel Pentium 4, 3 gig. Okay, with well, 500 meg, 512 meg of RAM and yeah. Not sure what the hard drive was, missed it. Alright, we're into the BIOS and it looks like we've got a uh, fairly modern, I guess, um, 7200 RPM, uh, 250 gig um, hard drive. Not too bad at all, uh, considering it's an industrial uh, PC like this. And uh, we've got a, and a Phoenix uh, Award BIOS. And as we saw, we had a, uh, we've got all the chipset goodness all the integrated peripherals woohoo pc health status and uh, frequency voltage control sped spread spectrum nah we don't want to uh spread the spectrum to do uh, emc uh to pass our emc compliance nah no need to do that but there you go so um quit without saving yes and we'll uh, boot up we've got keyboard the mouse didn't work maybe it has to detect it i don't know much about linux but uh, yeah, 512 uh, meg and a Pentium 4 at uh, 3 gig. So it's no slouch in terms of an industrial computer, that's for sure. So, Enterprise Linux. E do I want EL Custom or do I want Standard EL? I don't know. EL Custom sounds interesting. And uh, presumably it will detect the mouse now when it boots up because I plugged the mouse in before, after it's uh, booted. Or force. Ooh. The following sound card has been removed from your system. <laughs> Somebody took a uh, do nothing. <laughs> sound card do nothing. There we go, we're booting up. Alright, let's try that again. And by the way, I just looked up eBay and somebody has this exact same uh, Rocky uh, model card for about uh, 350 bucks on eBay. Buy it now. Absolute bargain. So, and probably get someone who will, you know, need a replacement board or something, and they'll probably buy it, because the board is probably like a thousand bucks or something. I can't remember the exact prices or what they are these days, but username, I don't know, Dave. Oh, I can't even type anything. No, the mouse, ah, uh, bloody mouse doesn't work. It's plugged into the USB, it didn't detect it. Bloody Linux. Type, like, the keyboard worked before. Why doesn't it work now? Unbelievable. Crap. Ah, I give up. So anyway, there you have it. There's a uh, look at an ICP uh, Electronics IEI industrial computer with the uh, uh, well-renowned Rocky motherboard. They're used absolutely everywhere. They're uh, phenomenal. And uh, this one looks uh, to be uh, fairly new, fairly modern, and in really good shape. I like it, so don't know what I'm going to do with it. I don't really have a need for it, so probably go on eBay, I guess. Eh, unless you got better ideas. Catch you next time.